NVIDIA is gonna take us beyond. Intel rocking at eight whole gigahertz and AMD making your games just a little bit better. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today is the top story we're gonna have talking about NVIDIA's RTX 40 series launcher. At least that's what we think it is because they're, they knew that they had an event happening at GTC on September 20th, but they never really told us that it was for video gamers and GTC was typically always about like the heady stuff rather than the video gamey stuff. But now we have a good indication because GeForce Beyond is happening. And just so everybody knows, I'm saying it like that as a callback to Howard Dean's 2008 presidential campaign that was sorely ruined by him making a noise like that. Ah! What a different time, Kyler. What? Oh boy, GeForce Beyond is taking place on the September of 20th and it's gonna happen at 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific. And they tweeted it out with NVIDIA GeForce's Twitter page where you can see all the splashes and the flashes of lights coming at ya. It looks like we're gonna be getting the RTX 40 series sometime soon. We are expecting that this might be the announcement of the more high-end cards 4070 and on up, but from what we gather, the RTX 4090 should be launching soon-ish, probably October, and then other cards are gonna be launching later this year, if not early next year, because Nvidia doesn't wanna continue to step on the toes of their RTX 30 series, which they overproduced. Crypto is going crazy, so they're mining, the operations are not as good. So it's, it's creating a situation where Nvidia needs to charge you for something you don't want while you wait for something that you might want in hopes that they give it to you, but they're not going to give it to you until you succumb to what they want, because don't you know, they're in control here, okay? You play your video games the way they want. NVIDIA, the way it's meant to be played, no, that's gone, okay? This is like Google taking out don't be evil from their product statement. It's no longer the way it's meant to be played. NVIDIA, the way Jensen wants you to play. He's gonna take it out of his oven and he's gonna feed it to you. You take your RTX 40 series down with a good gulp and hulpin of whatever Jensen can whip up, but I can whip up a video sponsor for today, so let's do that. Today's episode of Hot News is sponsored by ClickBot. Isn't that right, buddy? You don't know? My friends, ClickBot is amazing because it's an intelligent coding robot, good for both education, but also entertaining. Oh yeah? Look at this thing. My friends, ClickBot can help develop your hands-on ability, creativity, and unlimited imagination by clicking separate robotics blocks together. ClickBot the edge AI technologies and it's born with personalities like this little guy right here is back, aren't you? You also got Bick, who has wheels and likes to have a little sass while he roams around your office. They're like animated characters, but with real-time response. It's a good companion for you and your family, but you can also learn to code because the ClickBot STEM robot is perfect for anyone interested in robotics and coding. You select the movement directions to get ClickBot to move or design your robot on the ClickBot app through an easy drag and drop coding interface based on Blockly by Google. And you can even input your own code to build your own robot that can do virtually anything. Is that right, Back? Yeah, you keep telling them. If you think ClickBot is cute, you're gonna absolutely love Luna, which is the most intelligent pet bot made by the same company. It's gonna be so playful and affectionate that you'll forget she's a robot. It's launching soon on Kickstarter, and you can check that out at the link in the video description. ClickBot itself is so much fun to play with. I can't imagine having an intelligent pet bot that's just roaming around your house. And ClickBot even has their own online community that you can participate in with free video courses, competitions, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can meet crazy robots from 82 plus different countries and make friends worldwide without stepping outdoors. This has been great for my kids to play around with. I've had him down here in the office just roaming around when he's big on the wheels, trying to get everything going, but it's tons of fun. You can see it has its own personality that's coded into it. And with the kits that you get, you can build several different robots, making it a great gift for kids, friends, family, etc. It There's a lot that goes into it, both on the robotic side, as well as on the programming side. You can click the link in the video description where ClickBot is available on both Amazon as well as on ClickBot's own website. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And Tim Cook is whipping up the Android people into a frenzy, okay? He was asked by The Verge, talking to them about, uh, hey, 
those green chat bubbles that you have on iPhone, people don't like that and you're not really supporting RCS properly and you're making it difficult for Android people to have good colored bubbles on iPhone. And, uh, and, and Tim Apple said that you, you should just buy your mom an iPhone if she's having that problem, which is the hilarious ending to, I mean, what, what is essentially a non-important conversation in the first place, okay? Apple not supporting RCS effectively that's one conversation. But there's nothing to say that the color of a freaking chat bubble while you're texting people on your iPhone matters at all. If it's green, if it's blue, it don't matter. It, matters. it doesn't. It's not. You're fired. No. <laughs> See, that's something that matters. You having a job. Why does it matter? Come, come explain with your Zoomer logic. You see kids, it's that the green is... <laughs> Can, do you mind? <laughs> I'm allergic to you. <laughs> You see, kids, it's because the green is stinky and gross, and the blue smells fresh and smells good, and it smells nice. Like fresh laundry. Like fresh laundry detergent, and the green, it smells yucky, like Shrek, like gross, like onion. Shrek is gross? The smell is. I've been lied to my whole life. Anyways, that's why it matters. Good night. I'm going home. Yeah, because you got fired. <laughs> oh boy. Guess what I'm gonna fire at you guys. Crypto stocks, Bitcoin up 1%, it's at 19,261. Ethereum's up 3.8%, getting ready for that merge happening. 1634 and Dogecoin up not hardly at all to be at just over six cents. And I'm up over the moon that Reese talks to me because I love him so dearly. What do you got for the UFD deals, my friend? Thank you, Brett, and welcome back to UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Speaking of, I didn't forget about our deal in international waters, Brett, but I didn't forget about these deals either. Because first up, we have the Silverstone SX700 PT. They're 700 watt, 80 plus platinum, small form factor power supply. I actually had one of these in my old small form factor build back in the old UFD tech office, and it was a gem. This thing's currently going for $91.50, which is currently 48% off. And next up, we have the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML2 280, the mirror ARGB closed loop AIO, which has the sickest looking infinity mirror on it. The 280 millimeter radiator version is going for only $74.99, which is 44% off. And don't forget, you can find all these deals and more linked in the video description, and I'm handing you over back to Brett now. Very cool. I think that we should share a burger at Rocco Mama sometime soon. Hit me up uh, whenever I'm in South Africa, which that doesn't make any sense, because why wouldn't you anyways? But Rivian and Mercedes-Benz are hitting each other up for a partnership when it comes to making electric vans. Mercedes-Benz coming out and saying that they're gonna work together on bespoke large commercial electric vans for various companies and that they signed a memorandum of understanding for this. And Rivian saying that they believe that together they'll produce truly remarkable electric vans, which will not only benefit their customers, but the planet. And this is on top of the fact that Rivian is already producing delivery vans for Amazon 100,000 of those, which originally was supposed to be fully delivered by 2024. Now the updated timeline looks like 2030. Rivian, I think, has all of the makings to be super successful, but from what we've seen with Tesla, as well as other startup EV manufacturers, the road to profitability is very dangerous and very tricky. And it's just gonna come down to both the CEO of Rivian as well as their board making the right decisions, finding the right partnerships to be profitable while they're constantly just losing money while they're not delivering enough vehicles. I really want Rivian to succeed and seeing partnerships like this make me happy. I wanna see more of it. I also wanna see more autonomous car stuff, okay? Ford announcing that Blue Cruise is getting an update, which is their hands-free driver assistant, which is actually hands-free, you don't have to jiggle the wheel like you do on Tesla. And it's gonna do auto lane change for you, baby, if you just tap the blinker, it's gonna move on over. It's also gonna have in-lane repositioning so that if you're like driving next to a semi, it's gonna like slowly ooch on over so that you can not be directly next to it. So all of that is great, something that Tesla already has with their autopilot, that lane positioning. Auto lane change is like the one feature that's not in base autopilot that is so good, it's like, I love it so much on the highway, just being able to hit a blinker and my car changes its lanes. They used to only have it in full self-driving, now it's an enhanced autopilot, which makes it like, I'm not who, why would you spend $6,000 just to get that one feature? But if they sold it by itself for like 500 bucks, I would do it. I would make it so that my car could change lanes, but then I'm just giving in to the software and microtransaction commodification of vehicles. Wow. I, I'm a bad person, but Jeep's doing good because they're announcing four new electric vehicles that they should have out by 2025. So the new Jeep Recon, which 
I absolutely love. It looks like a futuristic Jeep from the front, but it kind of looks like a Bronco from a side, which uh, Jeep took a little bit of inspiration from Ford on this. They also announced the new Wagoneer S, as well as the Jeep Avenger, which is only gonna be in Europe next year, which I love the look of that too. All of these battery electric vehicles that they're gonna be coming out with. I mean, I would totally buy a Jeep Avenger that's smaller than a Jeep Renegade if it's fully electric. I don't, ah. Uh. Also, Chrysler is gonna be coming out with an all electric version of their minivan. They're gonna be nicknaming it the Airflow. There is a plug-in hybrid Pacifica, but the Airflow hopefully should come out. This is something that I constantly talk about in hot news, the fact that I want an electric minivan. Every minivan that we've looked at does not hit all of the requirements that I kind of need for my family. Number one, I want fully electric. Number two, I want to have all wheel drive because my cars can't make it up my driveway even in the summer without all wheel drive. The tires flicking, slipping. And then I need the doors. I need the disability doors for my son so that I can get him in and out of the car. And just like the Toyota Sienna is the closest thing that I can get, but they're back ordered by eight months and the dealership wants to charge me 20 grand extra as a commodification markup for the current market. And it's just, ouch, it's all bad. More, more electric vehicles, which, Chevy is doing with the new Equinox EV that they're announcing, which I am super excited for. It's supposed to come out towards the end of next year, the 2024 Chevy Equinox EV. Number one, I think looks pretty good for a compact SUV, but number two, it's gonna be priced really aggressively. 300 miles range roughly and roughly $30,000, which for a fully electric vehicle that gets that amount of range in the SUV styling is very, very price competitive. Beats out the Mach-E, the Tesla Model Y, cheaper than the Ionic five this seems to be like something that could potentially be appealing to the mass market so it has all of the makings of being a very popular electric suv the styling is not too bad i do like the fact that chevy is pushing forward with these more affordable options the chevy blazer ev that they announced earlier also looks to be a little bit cheaper i think i read somewhere i could be mistaken that the top of the line version of this equinox should only be about 40 grand so you're not getting a ton of spending room for it to go super crazy. And they're also not trying to tout it as some super revolutionary vehicle. They're not giving you a zero to 60 time like Tesla normally does. It's got 290 horsepower, 346 pound feet of torque in the all wheel drive version. But I mean, that should be plenty for most people. It's a good looking car at a good looking price point and a good looking amount of miles that can go on a range. The only thing that again, I'm super skeptical of is the fact that you'd be able to buy it for $30,000. Number one, Chevy's not even able to make enough bolts right now. They can't get those on the dealership lots. I've called local Chevy dealerships and they said that it's still several months out. Number two, they're also doing the market markup where they're charging you more because there's a shortage. And then number three, in some of their more recent shareholders calls, the CEO has talked about the fact of what their capacity is for battery manufacturing. And they're not gonna make enough of these at $30,000. This is gonna be a very popular vehicle and Chevy's not gonna be able to keep up with demand. Ford's not able to keep up with demand for not just their fully electric vehicles, but also things like their hybrid Maverick. We're, we're seeing so much demand on the EV side of things that the production is just really not happening in the run rate of these vehicles. I just, I don't see an environment in 2023 and 2024 where these are actually selling at the MSRP because dealerships are still allowed to charge you markup, throw the price out to Wazoo and you're paying $50,000 for a $30,000 car. Sorry, I'm a little salty because I've done a lot of car shopping lately, but in case you want to buy stuff from YouTubers more, you can do classes. YouTube wants you to shop around and buy classes on YouTube directly. Think of it like masterclass, but from your favorite YouTubers, which several YouTubers do have a masterclass. MKBHD, Ninja, is Ninja a YouTuber? Yeah, neither do I. Anyways, YouTube gonna be providing access for that as well as other features like a quiz feature where you should be able to ask your favorite creator questions directly and then they can integrate that into videos, kind of like formalizing the Q&A structure that some YouTubers actually do. I. I'm in favor of these. It seems like YouTube's rolling out features that are gonna be helpful for education, that are gonna be helpful for monetization for the creator side of things, as well as connecting them to their community. 
All seems like kind of a win, which I you got you might be a little skeptical that it's gonna work. But YouTube needs to keep its market share away from TikTok, and Intel tried to keep its market share away from AMD, and they're not succeeding. Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of Intel, coming out and saying that they are still expecting to lose market share to AMD over the next year or two, saying that they do expect that their overall data center business growth is gonna happen year on year as they go forward, but they believe they're still losing market share at least through the next year saying that the competition just has too much momentum and we haven't executed well enough. So we expect that bottoming. Essentially through 2023, they're gonna continue to lose market share. 2024 is where they're gonna reach parity and 2025 is where they're gonna actually get into leadership again. So this is the CEO saying all of this. I do appreciate to some extent Pat Gelsinger's approach with this where he is admitting that Intel has made some missteps. They are not executing as well as they could have been over the last few years. And and it's not just that AMD has momentum, Intel ceded momentum to AMD. AMD is not just doing well, they're doing well in the vacuum of Intel doing well, which has created a boon of opportunity for them. So I'm excited. It does seem like 13th gen Intel, along with Ryzen 7000, is gonna be a very good fighting class for the consumer. I like to see this. Hopefully we continue to have this for many more years to come because competition is good for us. And it looks like the 13900K is not just gonna compete when it comes to gaming and multi-threaded performance, but also for the overclocking crowns, a new detail coming out that the 13900K has been able to hit eight gigahertz on liquid nitrogen overclocking. This is trying to get up to taking the crown from the FX8350, which for the longest time was the frequency king. It still is at 8.6 seven gigahertz, but if we're seeing that Intel's coming out with these chips that can hit higher frequencies, maybe it might get stolen one day. It's It's been around for eight years, that frequency record. We'll see if it, it falls. And AMD is falling for you to give you more better performance. FSR 2.1 is released. That was a weird segue, I'm so sorry. It's gonna reduce shimmering and ghosting. FSR 2.0 recently launched. They're coming out with 2.1 with a few fixes to make things a little bit better. If you look at these two comparative side-by-side -side shots, this is 2.0 on the left. You can see some ghosting down here with the tractor pulling stuff, whereas here on 2.1, it doesn't exactly have that. But all of the fixes to 2.1 are there in case that matters to you for the video games that you play. And in case it matters to you about me, uh, we have an announcement coming here on Monday for Hot News. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be pretty big. I am looking forward to it. I look forward to seeing you for Hot News on Monday.